great welcome to the Radisys keynote. Uh, joining me today is Adam Salim, the CTO of Software and Cloud Solutions at Radisys. Now he's going to be presenting on gamifying the user's journey and the CSP service offer. So Adnan, over to you. Okay, thank you, Alan, um, for introducing the topic. So uh, it's really about uh, introducing uh, user journeys in a more richer, immersive experience um, where personalization and hyper-personalization of the content and the role that Radisys Media, Engaged Media Server provides in terms of delivering that content to the end, end users as well as, as we will see in, uh, later on in the presentation, how uh, AI and machine learning technologies are being used uh, to provide that uh, immersive experience, as well as the ability to provide open APIs so many different solutions and verticals can be created. So with that, we'll see what is, what is really meant by hyper-personalized uh, user journeys. So it really starts with personalization about the end user and knowing something about the end user. Uh, so in our example here is Megan uh, and the things that Megan likes, whether she's a sports fan or she's a concert goer, or whether she likes coffee or what her personal likes and preferences are. That's really about personalization and having some information or knowledge about, about the end target user. Once that's known, it, the Radius's Media, this is where Radius's Media Server plays a greater role as we'll see later on in the slides, is the uh, interactive engagement with that uh, personalized co content uh, to, to end user for various different verticals. So that involves um, virtual reality, augmented reality, natural language understanding, delivering real-time media on multiple devices. Uh, the gamification experience itself uh, is not necessarily restricted to uh, video gaming as, as we know it, but also the gamification of any kind of user interaction. This could be uh, in a training session, it could be a marketing campaign, uh, gamification of somebody uh, watching a live sports event or attending a, or attending a concert uh, or, or, or movie premiere, for instance. So all of those experiences can be gamified as, as we'll see further. So last kind of main part is, as I, as I mentioned, uh, is understanding the uh, targeted vertical. Uh, it could be a health and uh, fitness application where the user journey can be hyper-personalized uh, and gamified in a sense with provi providing that immersive experience. This of course requires a, a breadth of uh, dynamic partner ecosystem, uh, all the way from personalization to delivery of the content where Radisys plays a role, um, the gamification vertical market that, that is being addressed. Uh, and that is being done through um, rewards uh, and there is also opportunities for monet monetization uh, as, the, as the user is going through a journey uh, in, in, their, in their gamification experience. So combining all of that from the ecosystem then provides uh, service providers and ver uh, vertical uh, uh, industry providers to be able to onboard, dynamically onboard uh, new services and deliver a, a, a immersive rich experience where there's an opportunity for monetization. So looking at that further, more specifically in the role of the media server or the Radius engaged media server, as I mentioned earlier, this is involved in the front end uh, delivery of that multimedia content uh, to the end user as part of that gamification uh, uh, journey that that particular user uh, is, uh, is subscribed to. So this means delivering live or pre-recorded HD content. Somebody may be uh, participating in a, in a sporting event or, or a concert or a marketing campaign. So the delivery of that, uh, that real-time media over a VR headset or it could be a tablet or multiple devices over multiple networks with various encoding formats and bandwidth considerations, et cetera. So that's all part of the delivery of the stream, but it goes much further than that, um, which is what the immersive experience comes from. So as the user is participating in that experience, the speech interaction, as you'll see on the left-hand side here with their speech analytics and video analytics, this is the sort of the key role of the engaged media server above and beyond kind of the general purpose uh, video and, uh, and content streaming. So as a person is uh, engaged in that experience, um, they may be speaking words and keywords and, and sentiment analysis, that audio in real time is being uh, processed by the engaged media server, as you see on this diagram here, uh, to determine what interaction the user is having with the experience. So the user may say, invite my friends to this. There will be natural language understanding and speech recognition within the uh, engaged media server front end part of it which will invite uh, Megan's friends in this example here 
and they can co-watch that experience. Uh, we'll have a demo that will actually show that in, in action actually shortly. Um, the other part is on the left-hand side is it's a multi-device experience as well. It's not only limited to having a VR headset. Uh, this uh, experience can be delivered over multiple devices, over multiple networks with, within their own constraints, obviously. The solution itself is, uh, is a virtualized solution, can be deployed in the, at the edge or in the cloud. And, uh, and finally, it's all available through uh, management journey APIs that we expose to the media server so that the business logic, which we see on the far right-hand side of the diagram, the partner ecosystem brings in. Knowing something about the individual personalization, the gamification, the specific vertical, if there's onboarding of merchandising um, that may make sense for this, uh, for this gamification experience, event management, so if there's a sporting event, that there'll be some event management capabilities that would, that would come from the ecosystem, channel promotions, et cetera. So that ecosystem, what makes a complete end-to-end -end, uh, user journey from a gamification perspective, the role that Redis is at engaged media servers providing is the, is the front-end user uh, real-time interaction uh, with the end user that is participating in that event. Now with that, um, recently we, uh, Redis has said that I've been working uh, within TM Forum Catalyst uh, it's labeled the uh, Ready Telco one. Uh, I'm sure if you look that up, you'll find a lot more information behind it. But it kind of goes to the key uh, uh, key concept that we're introducing here in terms of the uh, hyper personalized gamification. So this uh, this partnership or partner solution was put together by uh, CSP. So as you can see, Orange, KDDI, uh, NCEL, and also the solution vendor partners who are involved in creating this end-to-end -end, uh, solution and uh, and a live demonstration of that that I'll, that I'll be showing shortly. Uh, so that involved Netcracker, Microsoft, Conviva, and you see on the right, far right-hand side, Redis, where Redis is, is providing the full front-end uh, real-time uh, experience to the end user. So let's take a couple of minutes here. I think you'll probably get a good idea once uh, I see a, a, a two to three minute video uh, that describes uh, this demo. So we'll start here. Megan has put on her headset and is logged in to view the event. One thing that she can do to improve her viewer experience is to invite her friends. She'll check to see who is online. Hey, Orange, how many friends do I have online? Her friends who have opted into the game experience will have access to this unique functionality to earn achievements and perks themselves by participating in the event. For example, if they accept Megan's invitation, they will in turn complete an achievement and earn a five euro voucher from a partner. Megan will go ahead and invite everyone who's online. Hey Orange, invite all my friends. The invites were sent out and Megan just earned a few points that will increase her customer level and can also be cashed in for rewards. Not all events, however, will be triggered by customer actions. Events can be captured externally as well in real time to facilitate interaction with Megan. In this case, a Hado player performs a clutch knockout on an opponent, generating an external event that will trigger a promotion from Orange. Hey Orange, show me the promotion. Orange already knows a bit about Megan at this stage based off of the prior interactions with various applications and understands what she likes or doesn't like. As a result, Orange presents a tailored promotion based on the highest chance of facilitating a positive interaction with the customer, as well as a successful purchase. Megan prefers to have the option of using her gamified points for unlocking discounts for each purchase, so that option is presented to her automatically. Hey Orange, unlock my discount. The discount is unlocked, and Megan can now apply a 10% discount to her order. If she chooses not to use the discount, the points will be attributed back to her profile. She is happy with this result and decides to continue with the purchase. Hey Orange, apply the discount. Hey Orange, place the order. Since she decided to place the order, there's only one more step to confirm the payment method. Hey Orange, use my default card and place order. The order is placed and Megan will continue to cheer her team on to victory. When her team wins, Megan earns additional points, an exclusive reward for participating in the event and supporting her favorite team. Now at this point, 
you've seen how gamification can broaden customer appeal by facilitating dynamic achievements and events tailored to customer interests, as well as simplify the relationship between partners, both big and small. We will now explore how we accomplish this user experience in more depth, discuss the roles of each Catalyst participant, and how we leverage the TM Forum open standards to seamlessly work together to gamify our end user experience. Okay, so hopefully that uh, gave a uh at least one uh, specific uh, use case that showed an end-to-end -end, uh, hyper-personalized gaming experience, and more specifically, where the where the various is engaged media sort of plays this role in, in terms of the full speech, video, AR, uh, and, and VR interaction capabilities under the control of a business logic that is that has created the the uh, personalization and the monetization on the back end of the infrastructure. So let's look at some. More details in terms of what the solution what the solution looks like. So as we discussed earlier, so Redis is engaged media server through a set of open APIs as you see on sort of the northbound of the thing of the media server is receiving real time audio and video from the participants one or maybe it's in a group session. Uh, and the media server uh, is providing the speech recognition, which is in call keyword or wake word section. So when Megan said, hey, orange, that's a keyword wake word that initiates that action to be triggered or to determine where through natural language understanding and AI built models uh, that can be uh, detected and be acted upon in, in, in real time. The other aspect we saw was a computer vision aspect where augmented reality uh, uh, and AR overlays were being uh, onto the video feed that, the, that Megan was seeing in terms of the offers or promotions or interactions that she may be having uh, with the experience, uh, the hyper-personalized experience that she's going through. Um, and lastly, uh, the biometrics part of it, uh, the media server, since it's, it's the audio and video is, uh, is being processed in real time by the uh, Redis's engaged media server, uh, there's capabilities built in there for, uh, for uh, facial uh, recognition, uh, authentication, as well as sentiment analysis. So if Megan didn't seem to be happy or her facial expression didn't seem to be too interested in what's going on from an audio and a video uh, perspective, the biometrics can, um, from an AI machine learned to a training algorithms, can report events to the uh, to the logic that the sentiment analysis of events occurred, so that can have the hyper-personalized hyper experience uh, uh, delivered to the end user. So when we look at that, there's, this is a immense amount of data, as you can imagine, uh, and we can see that um, the role that uh, such an immersive um, content in real time uh, does require in some use cases uh, a 5G network, although it can be delivered in 4G and LTE, depends on the use case, the amount of data and the amount of latency that's required. Um, but it's more suitable for cer certainly many verticals where a 5G infrastructure, as well as an edge compute to be as close to the user as possible. So have this as close to the stadium or where the event is occurring or where, where, where the most of the media and the content um, is being served. Uh, to provide that uh, lower latency and offloading um, from hosting in the cloud. Um, so the improved uplink, uh, the lower backhaul cost, the reduced latency, ultra low latency of 5G networks combined with uh, uh, edge compute or a multi-access edge compute platform where this Redis is engaged media service hosted is, a, is an ideal fetch to be able to do, uh, to be able to provide this uh, hyper uh, personalized real, real time multimedia experience. So let's look at it maybe a, a little layer below. So the engaged media server is providing, um, as we saw all the real time multimedia experience, but also has the ability to, to contact the end user through other uh, uh, omni-channel interactions as well. So as Megan may be interested in something um, that prompted a, a trigger or an event, uh, she may get an SMS message or maybe an SMS and notifications may go to her friends. Um, so the connectivity from an uh, SMS or messaging perspective, uh, as well as uh, being able to participate in loyalty uh, web application or connectors into social media networks that uh, from with maybe WhatsApp or maybe uh, you know, a Facebook hosted event. Um, so connection into that in an omni-channel um, uh, programmable way with conversational AI and, converse, uh, and the um, IVR programmability as an interaction is something that Redis is engaged media server uh, is, is capable of providing, uh, depends on, uh, on the vertical. So in our use case, if Megan wanted to make a purchase uh, or sign up to something, 
Megan may have said, I, I, would, I would like to talk to an agent now instead of just saying make a purchase. So the capabilities and the greatest engaged media server are there that based on speech recognition and natural language understanding, an outbound call will be placed, as you can see in this diagram here, and an agent will be immediately connected to Megan to help her uh, if she may have any uh, particular queries uh, for the product offering that, that, that she may be considering as part of the engage, uh, engage experience she was going through. So live transfer agents uh, uh, as a trigger of what the, uh, what the experience that, that Megan was going through. Those are all part of the uh, Redis is an engaged media service solution. So the uh, video speech analytics, computer vision are inherent, inherently fundamental requirements of delivering that hyper-personalized experience, uh, particularly in, uh, and more so in the upcoming 5G, uh, 5G re arena where a lot of those use cases uh, do become viable from a technology perspective and, and the broad scale uh, perspective. So that can be applied to gaming, uh, to the entertainment industry, as we mentioned earlier, uh, live events, uh, sporting events, many different verticals, but there are a lot of common themes from a, uh, from a, a media processing or media server perspective, uh, which can be tailored as, while it's being provided or supported through a, a, set of, a rich set of open APIs. Um, and it can include things like keeping track of analytics about sports metrics, about your thing, which can be overlaid on the screen Somebody says, hey, show me what the stats are for my, for my favorite player. That will immediately show up very personalized uh, content. And of course, as mentioned, always the ability to uh, either um, reward the participant for their participation, uh, which may be in terms of uh, you know, a, a point reward system that's tied into the existing point reward system, or if there's an opportunity that's already been onboarded by merchandising vendors that immediately may want to make an offer. <laughs> that the end consumer can go and complete that transaction, even if it meant a transferring to a, li a live agent uh, to, get, to get further information. So having said that, we can kind of see the uh, hyper-personalized user experiences are mul multitude of digital devices, not relegated only to VR headsets, uh, but certainly those are there from a, uh, a virtual reality perspective as well, as well as perhaps 360 degree video content, but it could also be, uh, you know, uh, delivered through tablets, phones, other devices, even IoT devices for, for that matter. Uh, it, it's a matter of uh, bringing that into the into a more of an immersive user experience. So Redis's engaged media server provides those capabilities, but also more importantly provides an open set of APIs and SDKs. So this is an open system where the flexibility is there for Redis's to work uh, with our uh, with our uh, solution partners, as we saw in the TM form demo. Um, where the complete end-to-end -end solution um, uh, can, uh, can be created quickly and easily uh, through the set of open, uh, open APIs and SDKs that are, that are part of the Redis's engaged media server, as well as the, the communication uh, cloud infrastructure that Redis is plugs into. Um, so on the right-hand side, I think you already kind of saw uh, what the digital experience um, that, that, that can be created uh, uh, through this uh, gamification and hyper-personalization. Um, Experience. So uh, with that, I think I, I will uh, back to you, Alan, uh, if there's any questions or clarifications I can help answer. Oh, that was an excellent job. Well done, Adam. Really enjoy that. So yeah, just a couple of questions. Um, so you present a very compelling vision for how programmable telecoms, because that's what you're enabling, uh, creates unique customer experiences. Now, how do you see these experiences being realized? Is there going to be some kind of like GUI tool to abstract all these APIs and also the repositories? There's a lot of repositories you're using as well in terms of customer insights for telcos to be able to create these type of experiences. Yeah, uh, good question. So it, it's a collection of um, uh, APIs for once, but also the, the logic or the creation of the thing through, uh, through web portals with okay. GUI design tools that can say, this is what the interaction gamification experience needs to look like with an overall flow. But then of course, there's, there may be multiple vendor part of solutions, uh, mm -hmm. as you saw in each one of them, but the, the personalization may be kept in an AI database that is provided by, by a vendor partner. This is, yeah. if you query, somebody is, a, you know, is more of a sports fan versus maybe a concert fan, or somebody likes coffee versus something else, or somebody's more of a, uh, health and fitness enthusiasts versus so that information in its repository is, is part definitely part of the solution. The other part of the the other part of the solution in terms of what is going to be the end user interaction. Uh, ultimately, that's what matters. It's all, all about 
providing an enhanced experience to the to the end user and and keep them engaged in that uh, in that experience that they that they have so they come back to it and they enjoy that experience maybe in other verticals as well so that interaction definitely will provide uh, APIs and SDKs and portals to be able to go and 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 create that flow and logic so that it can be plugged into the overall uh, to the overall uh, solution that also includes other partner vendors from a, uh, from an onboarding of merchandising, for instance, or or rewards and point keeping systems. Gotcha, gotcha. Nope, that's clear. Uh, and making that you know experience as simple as possible is key. Uh, so that was a uh, good point you made there. So now, second question. Now, of course, you know as you'd expect, it's a Redis presentation, but the Redis Engage Media Server is the cornerstone of uh, the whole demo that uh, you gave. And you sort of alluded to some other examples of uh, other sort of customer journeys. So I'm just interested if you've got any other examples of some of the unique experiences the Redis uh, Engage Media Server enables. Oh yeah, sure. So uh, there's, uh, uh, there's numerous examples, but uh, uh, some of them um, also involve things like virtual assistants. So okay. somebody may get, uh, a user may get targeted a marketing campaign. Let's say there's a, there's a new movie coming out. I'm just going to pick an example. And now there's a marketing campaign that somebody goes and is interested in that. They may they may select to say no more about that or engage in, in, in that experience from a, mm -hmm. let's see the trailer and, and where it's playing. While they're, while they're seeing that video, the user is not able to interact with the thing. Oh, is, is my favorite actor show up or now who are the people? Where is the thing playing? Instead of seeing static interaction, what we're used to now, this will be a fully immersive two-way in, in, engage experience where the continuity of the user experience will be there from a, a real-time media, multimedia perspective where the user can say, well, that's great. Oh, there's also a discount, by the way, if you want to go see a movie, there's some, there's some additional promotions that are going on if you're interested. You're able to go and enjoy that experience and as well as be able to transact, transact on it um, um, if that's part of the, uh, part of the um, the overall gamification experience. Okay. So it could be in the move, you know, the healthcare industry is another good example. Mm -hmm. Somebody's doing healthcare, but while you're watching the video, while you're an exercise machine, there are there's where you could speak and have an interaction to it and watch me videos, clips, and very different than perhaps maybe in education form. So yeah. you're participating in a training program. The amount of participation that some an individual may have in a kind of a training classroom scenario may get rewarded for participating more mm -hmm. uh, versus somebody who's a silent me. Uh, silently there and just consume. So there's many, many aspects and many different verticals can be used. I think the underlying fundamental building blocks want to make sure that all of those kind of use cases fundamentally from a real-time media perspective are there with open SDKs and APIs so they can be easily plugged in and many vertical applications can be uh, can be produced quickly versus having closed systems and um, and be able to create everything from uh, from scratch again. Gotcha. Perfect. Nope. Some great examples. Again, thank you so much, Adam. This was a great presentation, demo, and really interesting Q&A. Well done. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Yeah.